News Channel. For your primetime news bulletin coming up, government announces plan to increase taxes as it presents 2013 budget, but also promises to rein in its spending. West African Gas Pipeline Company assures Energy Minister its damaged pipeline will be ready to convey gas to Ghana by the end of April and possibly mitigate the current energy crisis. Meanwhile, the VRA says it will cost the country $1.1 billion to power its thermal plant on crude alone if the gas does not become available. Relief really, finally comes to Gushewu schools where a recent storm caused massive destruction. In international news, Uhuru Kenyatta takes strong lead with 40% of results declared so far in Kenyan polls. All these and more coming up presently. In our very first story, government has promised to streamline and reduce its expenditure for the 2013 financial year. Presenting the 2013 budget statement to Parliament, Minister of Finance said Tekpe also announced a new tax regime to mobilize more revenue to fund government activities for the year. In line with this, four new tax bills, the Revenue Administration, Value Added Tax, Income Tax and Custom Tax are expected to be passed into law by Parliament before the close of the year. Finance Minister Seth Tepe said government will accelerate targeted investment in several sectors of the economy to facilitate private sector activities such as marketing and exports. The main macroeconomic targets for 2013 are outlined below. Real non-oil GDP growth of 6.5%. Real overall GDP growth including oil of 8.5% on a larger GDP base. Average inflation of 8.9% and period inflation of 9%, overall budget deficit equivalent to 9% of GDP, and gross international reserves of no less than three months of import cover for goods and services. Mr. Speaker, it is projected that economic growth will remain strong and inflation is also expected to remain in single digits in 2013. He projected a positive outlook for the economy, noting economic growth fueled by crude oil, agriculture and other sectors of the economy would exceed 8%. But this, he noted, would come at a cost. Mr. Speaker, we will come back to this house with specific tax proposals on the following. The vehicle income tax to improve its basis as a tax on transport owners and not a levy on vehicles as many perceive this tax to be. Environmental taxes, including taxation of plastics, to rationalize our excise and environmental tax regimes. The penalty on overage vehicles, to rationalize the normal tax and penalty regimes, and possibly revisit the open-ended policy that we currently have on the importation of vehicles of all ages. Communication service tax, with its implementation as a consumption tax with a definite policy on tax credits for, the intermediate, for intermediate transactions. He also talked about efforts by government to sustain its wage bill as well as its social intervention programs. Government will ensure that the single spine, which is an all-embracing government policy, will apply to all institutions that are fully or partially on government budget. In addition, government will speed up the migration of subvented agencies onto the mechanized payroll to ensure efficient control and management of the payroll. On job creation, the minister promised to equip the S-12 National Youth Employment Program, now the Youth Employment and Entrepreneurial Development Agency, to provide long-term sustainable job opportunities to the youth. I will shortly bring you reactions to the budget which was presented today. But President John Mahama has implored beneficiaries of this year's President's Independence Awards to be technologically awake, take full advantage of ICT available, I, available ICT resources and adopt innovative ways of doing things. He was addressing the 20 award winners at a ceremony at the Banquet Hall of the State House today. Gifte Ando Apia has details. I'm sure here... The President's Parents Independence Day Awards was initiated to honor a limited number of deserving pupils who excel in the basic 
Education Certification Examination. 20 pupils, two from each region across the country, were honored for outstanding academic performance and excelling in other curricular activities. Education Minister Professor Nana Opokwajimai entreated all stakeholders in education to work with a high sense of commitment and dedication. Since 1994, about 300 students have benefited from this scheme. Intervention strategies towards widening access and enhancing quality that include the upward adjustment of the capitation grant, increase in school feeding program, the provision of free school uniforms and exercise books, as well as the expansion and renovation of school infrastructure in order to reduce the practice of schools under trees. These are all good approaches that should impact positively on education in our country. Children from the Osu Presby Basic School put up a short piece on unity. Each of the award winners had their aspirations announced as they were decorated with medals by the president. Most of them had indicated interest in the sciences. The managing director of Nestle Ghana Limited, sponsors of the awards, reminded the awardees of the need to pursue success aggressively. President Mahama also had some words of encouragement for them. I urge you to take your studies seriously and constantly approach all your efforts in life with the disposition that you have something to offer not only your nation, but our world at large. As the nation recognizes and decorates you today, we do so hoping that you'll be a model for your peers and that you will encourage others to attain the great heights that you have attained. I therefore wish to entreat you to serve as examples in your schools and your communities and wherever you may find yourselves. Continue to shine, but above all, strive for excellence to achieve the high laurels that lie ahead of you. He noted that the beside the establishment the of 200 so senior high schools and the expansion of mathematics and science programs to cover over 10,000 more students, science and technology will be vigorously pursued. Eastern Award region. winners this it's year Nancy were each Fua, given a laptop, a certificate, of... a plaque and scholarships to see them through senior high school. Now, prior to tomorrow's Independence Day celebration of Ghana, Johnny has been speaking to some senior high school students in the Kumasi metropolis to find out what they have learned and remember about Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. A couple of them say the founder of Ghana achieved much for the country and deserve more than just a march, while others agreed Africa in general should commemorate him in style for playing a major role toward their development. Nkrumah is one of the greatest men to ever live in Africa, not just Ghana. He inspired a lot of confidence in several African countries. Several African countries. He first, he tried and gained the freedom for Ghana, which led to several independence around the continent. Because he's a determined person, he has done a, a lot to help Ghanaians. So he has set a role models for Ghanaians to all follow his path, because he has done a great job to Ghana during the British era. Nkrumah was a very great leader of Ghana. He was the one who fought for the independence of Ghana. He also helped for Ghana to become a presidential system of government. And Since March is the day that Ghana gained her independence from, uh, from her colonial master. That was the British. And it was since March 1957. Oh, he said the pace or gain independence for Ghana and set the pace for Africa to also follow. Because after 1957, uh, through to 1960, most of the countries in Africa gained their independence through the pace that Nkrumah set for Africa. This March is a day that we used to remember Kwame Nkrumah for the independence that he gave to Ghana or he, he achieved, he made Ghana independent. So what I would do to remember Nkrumah is that like we will march, like like we will march to honor him or we remember him. Kwame Kuma is a man of he's a great man when it comes to Ghanaian political history. He's the person to have been the first prime minister in Ghana and he has done a lot for Ghana. He 
made the uh, Tamamoto Way in Accra. He constructed a Kusomo Dam in affiliation with the Breti. We return to our earlier story on the presentation of the budget, which was not without some heckling from members of the minority who were today well represented. Unlike previous major sessions, which they boycotted or stayed aloof in pursuit of their standoff with the president, they intermittently disrupted the finance minister during today's presentation. Minority leader Seche Men Sabunsu, at the end of it all, described the budget as a fleeting one, saying it would not stand the test of time. The minority MPs did not hesitate to point out contradictions in the minister's presentation. <laughs> then came the minority leader, Jose Chairman Sabunsu's verdict. Mr. Speaker, um, but I think all told that what we change as the message on the true state of the nation has been vindicated. The cat, the cat is out of the bag. The cat is out. Honorable member, honorable member, honorable minority leader, we are not debating, we are not debating uh, the budget. Mr. Speaker, I agree, I agree perfectly. We are not debating. And I agree that the debate will have to stand again for at least three days. Jessica, I'm not oblivious of that fact, but only to suggest that we are ever ready, even today, to debate, to debate this, this budget of this budget, marking a journey to nowhere, a journey to nowhere budget. The usual branding of the budget on placards after it was presented was missing this time. Rather, the majority MPs broke into song, whilst their colleagues on the other side remained glued to their seats. Some members of parliament from both the minority and majority sides later shared their impressions about the budget statement. What I heard on the floor of the house, there wasn't much. There wasn't much meat. Some of the roads that were mentioned, they are in the 2012 budget, which was delivered in 2011. So I, I, I am a bit sympathetic to the minister. I mean, if you must find... Uh, if we must reduce the deficit from 12% uh, percent to 9%, it, it involves about 5 billion worth of revenues and expenditure cuts. What are we talking about? Are we going to fire people? Are, are we going to have a freeze? The only word I heard was freeze on uh, government something. But how, how much savings? They did a ghost uh, biometric. What are we getting? Uh, in terms of his delivery, it was not specific. Um. Generally, it's been a very frank uh, uh, analysis of the economic situation. Uh, an admission that we are still pretty much on track when it comes to our growth uh, targets. We are still very much strong when it comes to the fundamentals of the economy in terms of inflation, uh, the performance of the currency, the reserves of the country, uh, the banking sector. Uh, there is also an admission that we have some challenges that have to do with um, matching our expenditure with our revenue. Now, the managing director of the West African Gas Pipeline Company, Charles Adeniji, has given the assurance recommissioning works on the gas pipeline will be completed by the April 30 deadline. In an interaction with the energy minister, the WAPCO MD said the company has successfully completed tests to guarantee that the pipeline is safe to convey gas. He added that contractors engaged to undertake the recommissioning works are back on site removing water from the pipeline. The pipeline was said to have been destroyed in August last year by some pirates who were being pursued by Togolese Navy officials. The destruction to the pipeline has been blamed for the country's current energy crisis as it knocked the Asogli power plant out of production along with the nearly 200 megawatts it feeds into the national grid. Energy Minister Emmanuel Kofi Boa, who received the WAPCO delegation in his office, reminded them of the two failed deadlines and urged them to use this opportunity to restore their reputation. 
He also hinted of plans to meet with officials on end gas of Nigeria, suppliers of gas to Ghana, to discuss the availability of gas supplies to the country as soon as work on the pipeline is completed. This, he said, is aimed at avoiding a situation where the pipeline will be in place but without the required volume of gas to power the country's power plants. In a related development, the uh, Volta River Authority says it will cost $1.1 billion this year to produce electricity from its thermal plants if it has to rely solely on crude oil. It says it spent half a billion dollars buying crude oil for the plants between August and December last year. Addressing a public hearing in Accra organized by the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, Head of Communications at the Authority, Samuel Fletcher, would, however, not give any firm assurances as to when the current power crisis will be over, except to indicate there should be some respite if the West African gas pipeline resumes pumping of gas as promised at the end of April. The program was well attended by consumers and formed part of PURC's mandate ahead of any consideration of utility tariff increases. Most participants complained about poor service delivery among utility providers raising issues such as unannounced power outages, non christened Dumso Dumso, irregular water supply and reports of government indebtedness to the utility companies. They called for intervention from government and the PURC. The VRA's head of communications, Samuel Fletcher, gave an overview of the country's generation capacity, lamenting the crucial nature of its reserves. Now currently we spend like three million US dollars a day to run our thermal plants using crude oil. Now this is double the cost of using natural gas. What it means is that if gas costs $100, crude oil costs $200. Now the problem we have in this country is the reserve we don't have. And any time you don't have a reserve, it's like running your car without a spare tire. Our spare tire to be able to keep the system running is to fall on load shedding. The reserve we have is the load shedding now. Because if we don't do that, we risk the whole system going down. And that means the whole country staying in darkness. So we need that reserve. Chief Executive of Great Coach Charles Darko also added that rehabilitation and expansion projects are ongoing to reduce pressure on the transmission network. Director of Customer Services at the Electricity Company of Ghana, Dr. Smart Yeboa, also noted some suburbs in Accra consume more electricity than the whole of the eastern region. He says this makes the management of the supply in Accra a major challenge. He added, before the year ends, ECG would commission substations at Bubiashi, Dansoman and Apenkwa to reduce the constraint on the transmission network, which often results in power outages. The utility providers pledge their commitment to working hand in hand with other stakeholders to provide quality service to consumers. Similar fora will be held in all 10 regional capitals. Former Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Van Le Dosu, today told an Accra Fast Track High Court that businessman Alfred Woyome appeared before a committee he chaired and that the local organizing committee for the construction of stadia for the hosting of the 2008 African Cup of Nations. The former central banker who was testifying in the criminal case against Alfred Woyome said the terms of reference included authenticating the source of the money to be raised, how fast the monies will be raised in, other, in order to meet CAF's deadline, as well as the viability of the project. Valle Dosu, who was cross-examined by the lead counsel for the defense team, Osafu Bwabing, told the court the accused was invited to answer questions about documents submitted to his outfit covering the bid. He told the court a letter from the Bank of Austria was received by his committee supporting Vamet's bid. He, however, denied knowledge of inviting the accused to make a presentation to the committee which he chaired. Again, when the defense counsel asked him if he was aware of the local organizing committee's recommended payment of monies to Woyome, which he had earlier made on behalf of the LOC, the witness told the court he doesn't remember. 
but were being told him the money was in respect of a feasibility study Alfred Woyeme carried out for the project. Dosu also told the court his committee's recommendations was for Vamed to be contacted for further discussion considering the limited time they had on their hands. He also told the court a recommendation was made for government to look for an alternative. Van Ledus told the court under no circumstance did the committee which he chaired recommended that one of the bidders be given the job. The companies bidding for the project were rather graded with Vamed listed as the first one. When the lead counsel again put to him that this report was approved by the Ministry of Education, he told the court he was not aware. Prior to his testimony, the presiding judge, John Ajet Nassam, told the court the machine failed to record Dosu's initial testimony during his first appearance and will have to begin all over again. The case was subsequently adjourned until the 15th of March for the next witness to be called. Watching the primetime news on the Joint News Channel, Investigations Department of the Ghana Police Service is training 43 detectives to help investigate serious cyber crimes that are eating deep into many reputable organizations in the country. Their trainees are also expected to help track criminals, engage in narcotics and human trafficking. This is the first of five in series of trainings that will be organized. The two-week training in cybercrime investigations and digital forensics will take trainees through processes in tracking down criminals who engage in electronic banking as part of money laundering activities. Criminals will use computers to hack government websites to gain access to documents and also criminals who are engaged in narcotics and human trafficking will also be tracked down. When cybercrime is mentioned, the activities of Sakawa Boys and the 419 groups readily come to mind. But I would say these groups represent the least of the challenges that the police administration in general and the criminal investigation department seek to address through the e-crime projects. Ladies and gentlemen, there are serious issues that this program this project seeks to address. The training is a partnership between the Ghana Police Service and the E-Crime Bureau, a cyber security and investigations bureau. The E-Crime Bureau is providing technical assistance to the criminal investigations department to build capacity that can investigate all manner of cases in which technology has played a role as a tool, a target, or a repository. Acting Inspector General of Police, Mohammed Al Hassan, launched the program. Internet connectivity has made, made it easy for criminals, we all know, to act beyond our national boundaries. For that matter, a fight against it should go beyond individual organizations, it must involve all stakeholders and even stakeholders beyond our country's borders. We must bring in private, the private sector, and I see that being done. We must bring in the legal uh, 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 institutions we must bring in civil society and other social organizations because this affects all these different social groupings. Member of Parliament for Adwejri in Sawum, Anna Dompre, is excited about the move to build capacity of the police in Ghana. And increasingly, Ghana is becoming a very fertile ground for people to move within the sub-region to commit all sorts of cyber-related crime. So it's important this thing is taken up. We've had, we had reports of even um, the website of the Attorney General being hacked into, uh, the Ghana Armed Forces website have been hacked into, even members of Parliament emails have been hacked into. So it's so important and it's not anything that we can uh, shelve on the shelf. We need to go all out and work upon it and especially we can tap the energies of our youth. Most of them who are very fascinated by the sight of computers, we can tap into their energies to help in, in fighting this cyber-related crime. But 
also at the launch was the Commissioner of Police, Rosebio Atenga, and DCOP, Kofi Boache. The National Disaster Management Organization has presented relief items to schools in Gushogo, where students have been displaced after windstorms swept through the area last week. The relief items included 30 packets of roofing sheets, 20 bags of rice, 5 cartons of cooking oil, and buckets and drinking cups. Northern Regional Coordinator of NADMO, Alhaji Abdullahi Slimboma, handed over the items to the District Chief Executive of Gushegu, Alhaji Alhassan Fuseini, for distribution to the affected schools. The Gushegu Senior High School was amongst the first to take delivery of the items. The DCE, Alhaji Alhassan Fuseini, said he hopes the roofing sheets will help rebuild some of the affected classrooms so academic work can resume. And they are presenting to us 30 packets of roofing sheets, but for now, 10 is for this secondary school. That is 10 packets. That is to help you go back to your classrooms. Alhaji Alhassan Fuseini also said they have chosen to attend to displaced schools first before affected residents themselves because they do not want teaching and learning to be disrupted for long, especially because it also involves final year students who are due to write their final exams very soon. Assistant Headmaster of the school, Sumani Philip Abdullahi, received the relief items on behalf of the school. Mohamed Hashmin's report for Joy News. Next up, we bring you business news. In business news, government says it is keenly monitoring the level of debt incurred over the past four years and has outlined measures to solve the gaping budget deficit threatening to collapse the country's economy. Critics, including members of the opposition New Patriotic Party, have expressed worry over the increasing debt profile of the country, with some suggesting it may soon return to the highly indebted poor country status. According to former Minister of State at the Finance Ministry, Dr. Akwepose Ghana, debts has increased from 9.5 billion cities to 33.5 billion Ghana cities. But during his presentation of the budget statement for the 2013 financial year, the finance minister said Tekbe said government was aware of the rising debt stock and is putting stringent policies in place to stem the tide. He cited shortfalls in grants from international donors, the implementation of the single spine salary structure, higher spending on goods and services as some of the reasons for the deficit, adding corrective measures including hikes in petroleum prices have been adopted to bridge the gap between revenue and expenditure. So Tekwe said as a developing country, Ghana must still borrow to expand its infrastructure, but noted the government will shift its focus to the quality of loans it acquires and the quality of projects it applies the loans to. The National Labour Commission has declared a strike by workers of Golden Exotics, a banana exporting company at Estuary Illegal. The NLC and the General Agricultural Workers Union have subsequently directed the striking workers to go back to work with immediate effect. The workers of Golden Exotics declared the strike last week Tuesday over issues relating to pay rise. The NLC, however, faults the action because it took place at a time when negotiations were ongoing. The over 1,800 workers have not reported to work since Tuesday and the company is bound to suffer huge losses as their produce due for export is said to be wasting away on the farm. On a working day like this, this place should have been busy. Workers will be busy washing banana and others will be cutting it right from the aero tractor onto the platform and then they are washed and then packaged. But as you can see, the whole place looks so silent and quiet. Apart from one security man we met on duty, no other worker is around. It tells you the, the nature of the strike. And as you can see, banana is still hanging on the aero tractor. And the fear of management is that soon this banana would outgrow and then it becomes a waste. Last Friday, 
management and the workers agreed to a 25% pay increase. Phillips Akajo is a local trustee member of GAU. On the Wednesday, when we went to meet management in the effort of negotiation, they rather take us to the Labor Commission. So when we went there, the commissioner ruled out that what the actions our workers have taken is so much bad. So we should get back, get our workers back on the job, then we continue the negotiation. So as we can, we try to inform them about the new development from the National Labor Commission, but still we were not able to get them back. But we as union, we could see that even though the action of our workers is illegal, we are still losing some. As at yesterday, we've signed a communique together with management, which is saying, look, after Monday, anybody who failed to resume must be, must count his or herself out of the company because already the, the, sky, uh, the strike action has been regarded as illegal one. And upon that, your union have reached an agreement with the man. Join new sources revealed the strike so far has cost the company over 1 million euros. Joy News will follow the story and bring you updates. More commitments are being made of calls for further reduction in the lending rate of the Export Development and Agri Investment Fund, even though the current rate is lower than the commercial bank uh, lending rate. The Federation of Association of Ghanaian Exporters describes the call as necessary for the country's exports to compete favorably on the international market. Trade Minister and Trade and Industry Minister Harun Edrisu has said he has initiated moves for a review of the EDI law to address all such concerns. The coordinator of the private sector development strategy, Joe Taki, also tells Joy Business the issue forms a critical part of the second phase of the program expected to take off this month. The Ghana Cocoa Board has debunked publications in the media, particularly the Economy Times of Monday, 4th March 2013, indicating the board is insolvent. A press release issued by Cocoa Board Management states the issues contained in the said publication are false, are full of inaccuracies and intended to give Cocoa Board bad press in the eyes of its business partners. It says they wish to therefore react as follows. There are two operating systems in the global cocoa market forward and spot seal of cocoa. Cocoa Board has over the years sold cocoa forward and this system has helped the industry and the nation at large. Ghana's, Ghana's strategy has been to ensure that cocoa is still sold at a premium over and above that of the global cocoa market price. Ghana's cocoa therefore earns more premium than Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire prides Cocoa Board prides itself in the quality of its cocoa and this cannot be compromised. Besides that, Cocoa Board trades in traceable, organic, and certified cocoa. Therefore, the statement that Cote d'Ivoire is hitting the market with reforms while Cocoa Board is, refused to is refusing to respond is inaccurate. On the contrary, it is Cote d'Ivoire which has now moved from its spot sales strategy to the forward sales strategy used by Cocoa Board in order to try to catch up with Cocoa Board. The publication also accuses Cocoa Board management of not being in a hurry to retrieve the debts from local predecessors because of personal gains with some companies. It is on record that Cocoa Board has taken steps to retrieve the debts that local processors, processors owed. There are occasions where Cocoa Board has uh, left and uh, has had to deal with those issues. Uh, and uh, I'm sure there will be more on the, the statement in, in subsequent uh, editions of the bulletin. In international business news, China has left its economic growth target for the year unchanged at 7.5 percent as it looks to expand at a steady pace and maintain social stability. The country also set a lower inflation goal of 3.5 percent.